we got to What's going on guys? It's Bob from Olympus Iron. On my way back from home in severe traffic. Uh, so I was bored today at work and I decided that I was going to do a Q&A just curious on what you guys want to ask me. And the first question comes from Michael and he asks, what's the best way to bring up an upper your upper inner chest? And my best advice for this is mind muscle connection. And what I mean by that is when you do chest, a lot of people will just pump the reps. They'll do the half repetitions and you'll, you'll start targeting the outer part of that, the chest. And I know there's only two parts of a, of a chest, but what I mean is you're not getting full contraction. When you do a dumbbell press, at the top of the rep, you should be squeezing your both of your humeruses together, almost like you want to touch them. That should create such tension in the middle of your chest, and you should squeeze at that point. What, what happens when you want to flex your inner chest? What's the first thing you do? You take your both your arms, you press them up against your chest, and you flex hard, right? Like in a most muscular like crab pose. Well, when you're doing chest exercises, what's the first thing that you think you should do if you want an inner chest is to squeeze hard. You gotta push, push those arms together and squeeze hard. So on a press, I'm not saying you need to lock out your arms, but you need to get pretty close to lockout and, and really get that mind muscle connection and flex that flex that muscle. This is the one thing that I find everyone has a problem with. Is they don't flex the muscle that they're actually working out. They just do the movement. It's just like that mentality that, you know, doing a sit-up doesn't even matter. You can do a thousand sit-ups every day and not get abs, but once you contract your abs during the sit-up, that's when it actually matters. And in regards to your upper chest, my biggest thing is I would just make sure your ass is on that seat when you're doing incline presses. A lot of people turn incline presses into a flat press by bridging bridging their back, like basically taking their ass out of the seat, squeezing their glutes together and making literally a like flat surface that they can uh, that they can press on. So they turn it into a flat press and that's why their upper chest is lacking. Thanks for the question, Mike. Ryan Noonan asks I'm taking OptiMen vitamins, and they said to take it with food. Should I take? If I take it after workout with my shake, is that considered food? Well, since whey is a food product, yes, I would consider that to be food. Plain and simple. Yes, whey is food. All right. So Omar, Dino, and John all had similar questions asking about cutting um, macros for a diet. What I usually do in because I don't actually believe in actually the full calculation that cookie cutter, you know, this is what you need to do to figure out your base metabolism. I feel like that has some validity and that's a good start. And there's a there's a, there's a a calculator that you can use online for that. But what I tend to do is I weigh myself every day. And what I do is if I Am I at a consistent weight every day? That means I'm at maintenance. If I'm dropping my weight, that means that I am in a deficit. And the opposite is true as if I'm going up in weight. And what I tend to do is, if I'm dropping weight too fast, then I'll up the calories a little bit. If I'm gaining too fast, I'll, um, I'll, well, that's when you drop the drop the calories. But when if I'm losing weight too fast, I'll add more calories back, and just in a little amounts, just to make sure that I'm not gaining um, excess body fat or losing losing muscle, respectively. Um, it's all about body composition, feeling yourself out. The way that Steve does it for me is that uh, he looks at me and he can tell what I need to do. You know, he doesn't uh, he doesn't necessarily say like you know. He never tells me, oh, you need to do, you know, 300 grams of protein, this amount. No, he gives me a diet. He looks at me after a week or two and he says, okay, we're going to add more more fats in or we're going to subtract some carbs. You're holding a little fat. You know, you need to play around with it. It kind of takes an experienced eye, um, but the calculator is a good start. Warren asks, what's my favorite muscle group to train and why? Definitely legs, Warren. Uh, the reason why is because no one does them and no one does them correctly. And it's tough because 
it's the one exercise that everyone wants to half ass. It's the one exercise that no one wants to stay in the gym a long time for. But it's the one exercise that really spikes your testosterone levels. And my best workouts happen during leg day. It's just because you have to get into such a mentality that you're going to have a good workout or you're not going to have a workout at all. And we all know doing squats, doing heavy leg presses, doing anything like that, you can't have a failure mindset or you're not going to have a good workout. It's a muscle group that requires a mentality. And I like that. You know, you don't need a mentality to train biceps or anything like that. I mean, I guess you need a mentality to train anyway, but to train legs and train them hard, you need a you need to be a sick person and you need to like this industry a lot and like fitness a lot, which I do both. Thank you for the question. So my buddy Frank Searing asks, who's the strongest out of all of you? That question is very easy. Nick Pinero, the doctor. The reason why he is the strongest is because by far he gets the best reps with the heaviest weight and the slowest reps, the time under tension that he can that he can rep 130s on for dumbbell press is absolutely unbelievable. And every one of his lifts consistently is heavy. So just not based on one lift, based on all lifts, Nick Pinero. Michael asks, how long do you typically bulk for? Usually, in my opinion, for a natural athlete, I would bulk for a year plus, in my opinion. Just just my opinion, just how I feel. You know, I feel like it takes a while for you to put muscle on, and it's not an easy process. Therefore, going from a deficit to a surplus to a deficit to a surplus isn't going to be beneficial for you. I would consistently do a bulk. Uh, and by bulk, I don't mean go crazy with your calories, but uh, being, a, being a surplus for at least a year. Thanks for the question. Max Tuning from Max Tuning Skinny Legs asks, why is Max Tuning so much stronger than the God of Olympus, Bob? And the reason why Max Tuning is so strong is he was dipped in the river sticks as a kid by his mother, but she held him by his legs. Hence why his legs are so small. I love you, Max. Nick Wright asks, who do you think would win in a contest um, if you and Nick Wright cross paths? Nick, I don't know what you're talking about here. Are you talking about fight? Are you talking about on stage? Like, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about here. So I'm gonna answer, in a fight, be glad that I'm your friend. Um, on stage, I have yet to see what my on stage weight looks like, but I would love to get on stage with you. Come at me, bro. On Twitter, Aiden asked, as a tall lifter, what dead deadlift technique do you like better? Well, I like to do sumo better, but I still do conventional deadlifts. Um, it's a matter of, yes, being a tall guy and doing uh, doing sumos is going to be easier for you, but it does not um, it does not uh, does not substitute doing conventionals. And no matter tall, small, short, um, teeter totter the weight up and just make sure you're focusing on getting your form perfect. And, I, and it's never going to be perfect, but so Aiden on Twitter asked, "I'm a tall guy like yourself, a tall lifter." What deadlift form do I prefer? I prefer, per, prefer sumo, but I actually do do conventional as well because I think it's beneficial. Thank you, Johnny Candido from Candino Training HQ for giving that, me that advice. It's really helped out and I'm glad um, that I do both now. Dom from Twitter asks, will I ever go to the dark side? Oh, the question, the question of the hour. I do not think I will go to the dark side any time soon. And by any time soon, I meant in the, at least the next 10 years. Just specifically because at my age, yeah, it might seem like a great idea now because I'm young, I don't have a family. Like, oh yeah, like let's just get freaking huge. Um, my ideals say different. I truly believe that as a natural athlete, I can be so much better, so much stronger, so much bigger 
Um, I have a lot of growing to do. I have so much work to do. I can't even think about going to the dark side yet. Darth Vader, stay away. But to answer your question, when I'm 35, if I'm still this into the sport, if I'm really into it and my test levels are down, my results aren't there, I need to boost my recovery, will I probably do a shot of test, you know, as I, as I get older and my test starts to drop? Maybe. You, you, I can't tell you now because I have a 23-year-old mentality of a natural saying no. But then again, when you're 36 and, you know, you see your results slowly, slowly fading and you need a change, you never know. So to answer your question, Darth Vader's need to get, going to do a little more work. Dakota from Twitter asks, when am I competing and what is my advice on maintaining strength and size while cutting down? I am competing next year, 2014, in October, and my best advice for maintaining strength and size while you're on season trying to cut is don't change your workout. Don't. Don't do it. People change their workout and they change their results. What ends up happening is they start doing drop sets, supersets, all this stuff that their body their, their body is not used to. If it if it didn't work for you in the off season, it shouldn't be working for you in the odd season. To be honest with you, do the same, same work. Work hard and do the same work. You shouldn't change your exercise in the uh, in the on season, in my opinion. That, but then again, I haven't been on season. But from what I get from competitors, the best results that you can get on maintaining strength and size is to not change your workout. Um, just train hard, hard, harder, and add in the cardio. That's all. I, that's all I can say. Um, maybe I'll have a different view on this when I compete myself. But until then, this is my opinion. Take it as you will. Well, all right, guys. That's it for all the questions. Thank you for participating, um, my fellow Olympians. And definitely comment below if you have additional a question. Like the video if I answered your question and you like my answer, or if you just like Bob. Um, Make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so that you can get those updates and you can know when I'm back back giving you a video, which I try to do at least three times a week. Uh, bear with me, guys. Sometimes, you know, family comes first, but you guys have changed my life and you guys motivate me every day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Ever since you guys helped me out since April... I have gotten so much better. My training has improved. You know, you guys, I'm not just helping you guys. You guys have helped me out so much. So thank you guys. And I hope you guys have a good night and a very, very Merry Christmas and a happy holidays. Uh, Bob from Olympus Iron, out.